Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. I have something really exciting today. I designed something so useful that I can't even believe it. <laughs> the story goes like this. I got a new iPhone for Christmas. You know, my hubby, yeah. <laughs> so I needed a new case. My old case had the credit card holder on it. Well, of course, the old case doesn't fit the new phone, so I had to get a new case, but it doesn't have the money holder on it. So, you know me, I get to thinking and thought and thought and thought. Oh yeah, then it happened. I designed a credit card holder wallet for your cell phone cover. No stickies needed, easy flaps in, easy to take off. Any products that I use in my videos, they are always in my description box. Links to purchase them and find them. Enough talking already. Let's get to making something useful. I am making this cell phone credit card wallet to fit my iPhone 13 Max Pro. It measures approximately 6.7 inches by around 3 inches or so. Simply adjust your measurements an eighth an inch either way up or down depending on the size of your phone. Here I'm showing you my prototype of the curved area right there. And the reason why I curved it is because I want to be able to grab those cards in and out easily. And if it was straight across, I might find it hard to dig my fingers down in there to get what I need. After you've cut out all of the pieces to make this project, it's time to work on that curve. Of the two identical pieces that you cut out, you need to figure out which one the outside flap is going to be. You can fussy cut it or just figure out which side you like best. Sitting next to my blue prototype there, you can tell that it's that back piece. To curve these, I'm going to take the pieces separately and fold them in half. And then I'm going to take my ruler and at a half an inch, I'm going to measure down from the top on that raw edge and half an inch down. And then the part that's folded, since I want that to be the highest point, I'm going to draw a line right there. Here I'm just taking my pencil and curving it out since I want it more rounded than straight. Do this to the other identical piece as well. Once you have your curves penciled in on those two identical back pieces, you're going to pop a pin in while it's still folded loosely and then just cut right along that curve giving it that nice curvy shape. Now you can customize this to any shape you'd like. You could make it nice and pointy or you can keep it square, whatever you like. Whatever shape you decide on for your flap, just make sure that you cut both pieces identical. Set those aside and let's check out the huge mistake that I made on the front piece that I fussy cut specifically for this project. Yeah, you see when I folded that front piece in half like I'm doing right here which you need to do as well I cut the opposite way I cut from the folded edge down instead of the other way from the raw edge to the center and it was double aggravating because I didn't have another piece because I fussy cut that out of a fat quarter that I had so oh well learn from me guys learn from my mistakes this piece that I'm working on was the three and a half by four and a half inch front outer piece. Both the inner and the outer piece, you need to do the same thing, fold it in half lengthwise and then do that half an inch down and from the outside to the center down, giving it that scoop effect. Now take the outer piece with wrong side up and place your batting sort of in the center somewhere, leaving that quarter inch all around the edges. And then we're just going to take a sharp pair of scissors and just trim that curve into the batting. Now being the quilter that I am, you know I have to quilt something on the front of this piece. And you should too, because it's super cute. Now all I did was put some straight lines one way, a few of them, and then some straight lines the opposite way. 
but feel free to even put on your free motion quilting foot and do a little tiny micro design. I mean, how cute would that be? I mean, totally custom made. Just a great one of a kind project. Once you're all satisfied with your free motion quilting project, it's time to add the inner piece to the back of the front piece. So what you're going to do is take that white inner piece and place it right sides together, just like you see me do here. Pop a couple pins in so it doesn't shift. On the side here where I'm pointing, we need to leave a couple inches open so that we can turn our project right side out. So I'm just putting the pin in the opposite direction so I remember to do that. <laughs> now initially with this particular wallet for my phone, I sewed right at the edge of the batting, which was about a quarter inch or so. But I found that once I turned it right side out, it needed to go an eighth an inch smaller. I determined that it needed to go an eighth an inch smaller after turning it right side out and laying it on the back of my phone case. Now you should do the same too. That way you can have an idea of where you're at within the project. That's why I said at the beginning you could go an eighth of an inch increments higher or lower depending on how big you wanted it. I do want some extra space within my credit card holder because I carry a, a bunch of cards with me along with my driver's license so it needed to be able to fit all of that in there and maybe plus some cash. <laughs> After I trimmed it you can tell right there where I did the double stitching where I went in and made it an eighth of an inch smaller. Take this front piece and turn it right side out. I used a pokey tool to help me get those corners out the best that I could. And you'll still have that side piece there, but we are not going to sew that up until the very, very end. Here, I'm just going to iron everything in place so that that is a nice crease when I do go to sew it. It'll lay nice and flat for me. So far in the project, this is what you should have. That front piece is all done except for sewing in the side there. Let me bring in my prototype to show you how it's going. You can see that front inner white piece exactly where that is on the project. Next, we're going to figure out where our little Velcro pieces will go on our project. So I'm just laying that back flat piece down and figuring out where that's going to lay within my front piece. And that will guide me to let me know where to sew those Velcro pieces onto. I sew them on my project this way so that way there's no ugly stitching on any outer surface of this project. Once you have those two pieces all figured out, then you're going to take your outside piece, the quilted part, and you'll sew one of those Velcros on there. And then you'll take the inner piece of the back piece and you will sew that piece on. You just have to make sure that you stay away from the very edge on that outer piece on the top portion because you don't want to end up in the seam allowance. Now here you can see I only have that quilted piece with the white inside lining on it. I don't have the back piece with it. So here I just made a plus sign and then I went in a circular motion all the way around that Velcro. You can totally hand sew this on too if you feel more comfortable doing that. Now here's that inner piece. Now I only have one piece of it. Remember there's two identical pieces. So you only want to put the Velcro on the one inner piece. And you can see there I'm pointing to the seam allowance. You're going to have to make sure that you stay away from that edge. And then you just sew it on. Now if I had it to do over again, I, I think I would put something behind this piece because it felt like I was going over sewing on too thin of a piece, if that makes sense. But here you can see I just made like a starburst sewing design. And then I ended up going in a round circular motion around this one, just like I did the quilted piece. Now it's time to grab the other identical piece. And we're going to put right sides together. Put a few pins in just to make sure everything stays nice. And now you're going to stitch around this, that quarter inch. 
leaving the total bottom of this piece, the uncurved part, the opposite of the curved part, totally open. Remember I sewed an extra eighth of an inch in on that quilted portion, so I needed to do it on this portion as well. Those two need to be identical. After I re-sewed it again, another eighth of an inch, I ironed and pressed that piece after turning it right side out. On those two identical pieces that we sewed together, you should have a raw edge bottom that is totally open. This is where we're going to figure out where that needs to be tucked in and sewn together. I'm even going to use my Olive Garden card to help me figure that out. Because if I sew these pieces together too much in, my card's not gonna fit in there. And if I do it too far out, then it's gonna be too sloppy and I don't want that. Once everything is nice and lined up, then you're going to take that bottom piece there, the raw edge, fold it up where the bottom of that quilted piece is, hold a crease there, and then pull everything out of there. And then press that really good. And that is going to be our memory crease where we're going to turn that up and in. And you can see there, I did cut off whatever excess I didn't want on there, but don't cut it too short. Once you get that seam allowance tucked up and in there, you're going to give it a hot press. And then put everything back down, making sure that it all lines up before you sew it. Even lay it on your case like I did here, just to make sure everything was nice, nice. <laughs> Separate the pieces that real long piece there and do a top stitch all the way around, closing up that bottom section. Next, you're going to take that long laminated piece. Now you can use the Pellon vinyl fuse or maybe not vinyl fuse it at all. It's up to you, but I find that this way it will not fray. Fold the laminated piece in half, finding the middle, and the back piece, fold that in half as well, finding the middle. Match the middles up and clip these two pieces together. Now make sure right there on the sides that it's in the center of that laminated piece with it folded down, mind you. You don't wanna center it without it being folded down, those Velcro pieces. And then you're just simply going to sew down the sides of that back piece, connecting both of those pieces together with two stitch lines on both sides. Lay your quilted piece right on top of the bottom portion of that back long piece. Even everything up. Extra stitches at the top, so all the way around, this will create a top stitch as you go. And be sure to back stitch really good at the beginning and the end. Now you see, I didn't want to close up that area on the quilted area because I only wanted there to be a visible one stitch top stitch all the way around. If I would have closed that up with a stitch and then restitched over it, it would have looked sort of sloppy. So that was the whole reasoning behind waiting. I already can't wait to make more of these in different colors for my phone case. And you can see here, look how darling and I will grab my Olive Garden card seat that's in there nice, Velcro up, perfect. Oh my word, I absolutely adore this project. I'm even going to crease that right there where that flap is. So it will give me a memory crease of flapping back and forth. And here I'm just showing you on my phone here what it sort of looks like with the flaps out. Since I use my iPhone to film this video with, it's hard to set it in there to actually show you, but as soon as my husband comes home from work, I'm gonna steal his phone and video me putting it in my phone. So that's coming up here right now. So now I'm videoing with my husband's phone. <laughs> and let me just show you here real quick. There's about four cards in there and I can fit a lot more, plus some cash in there if I needed to. So the flaps are nice, they're very thin. You would first put one on the inside and then put the phone in kind of sideways so that it kind of just hugs that area and then put the other flap in and then lay your phone in nice and it should flatten everything out really good. And yes, that's my little baby Josephine on my, on my screensaver on my phone. Isn't she darling? Oh, 
just love her. Be sure to tell me in the comments what you think. Is this the most useful thing I've ever designed? Let me know. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.